Stack Nation, welcome back to Champ the channel. Champions, champions. <sighs> I feel calm. Do you feel calm? You mean in with all these waves of madness going around? Well, this man it does not matter the wave of the madness. What matters is when a CEO tells you to stay calm. You should trust them. And remember the last time I was taught to stay calm, I lost a ton of money. <laughs> well, listen, man, if being in this space teaches you anything, it teaches you that there's a group of people that if these people have to tell you to stay calm, you should probably start running as fast as you can. The opposite direction. Or to your back. <laughs> a group <laughs> <laughs> to your back to get your money out. Exactly. A group of such people is CEOs. Of any bank. CEOs of anything that has to do with your money. Yes, sir. Banks, crypto, anything. Anything with a CEO. Yes. <laughs> That's a matter of Because fact. we have come to now see, and it is a steady trend yeah. with all of these companies, mm -hmm. where when there is a uh, fire on the mountain, yeah. so to speak, they all tell you to calm down. Those are the famous last words before a certain aspect of your life gets destroyed. Take, taken from you. Yes. Like that. So then, uh, Silicon Valley Bank CEO tells VC clients to stay calm. If you've been following up with the situation going on, you know that the Silicon Valley Bank has now been closed or seized by the FDIC. And we did a video uh, before, actually, before we go into this, we did a video recently talking about the FDIC and banks, actually, it was, uh, I believe, oh, wait, wrong yeah, button. Yeah, no, we're Jeez, back, we're back, yes, we're back. I should we're probably back. be looking. Back, Are we back? back? Are we back? Yeah. They, say, they say patience is, but I did push the wrong button there. <laughs> anyway, we did this one video recently. We talked about the FDIC and how uh, they've been planning on closing down these banks for a long time because they, for one, their banks are really insolvent, uh, to put it very simply. But here we are now. We have a bank that has not been uh, taken by the FDIC. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, they say that there was going to be some major impact uh it's going to be uh they were expecting some digital or cyberspace attack yeah and they were doing this risk assessment and they said hey if this risk does occur and cannot be avoided they don't have they don't even have the money mm -hmm. to, <laughs> to to pay, cover anything to cover anything yes but also they also explain their process of taking over uh, and when this happens, how do they slow down or manage the contingent impact of yeah, it? absolutely. So usually you will not hear any word. They will just shut, shut it down. But we live in a digital age now where the, the news sips out really fast. Mm -hmm. And we get all the details of what's going on. And that's basically what's going on right now is that the FDIC is taking over the so-called stay calm in wild, mad oceans. Okay. Silicon Valley Bank CEO tells VC clients to stay calm. Okay, now this is Greg Becker on Thursday. Told venture capitalists in Silicon Valley to stay calm amid concerns around capital crunch and wiped out nearly uh, a capital crunch that wiped out nearly ten billion dollars in the bank's market valuation. Ten with a B, and that's just the market valuation. That is not your money in the bank that is also wiped out. That's ten billion dollars. Jesus. On the call, Baker said, "What did he say there?" Call started coming and started panic. Ah. That's all you need for the bank run. Well, listen, just a panic. Just a panic is all it takes. Okay. Now, double I know. There's a lot to cover on this one. So let's jump right into it. I should have scrolled back to the top of this page so that we do not have <laughs> was, to scroll past it was a lot. It was a lot to read, I understand. We had to scroll past the whole human being. Just to 
<laughs> it's that serious, bro. It's anyway, that serious. so SVB now yes. has collapsed amid a bank run. Bank run, this is something that we talk about frequently on the show. And, yeah, yeah. and yeah. we are seeing it happening live here and the consequences of such a thing. So regulators have shut down the Silicon Valley Bank on Friday mm-hmm. amid liquidity worries mm-hmm. and a run on deposit. This is the biggest bank failure since the 2008 financial crisis. Now, the collapse of this SVB uh, bank, which has been a, a major lender, right, mostly to tech startups mm-hmm. and venture capital firms, has now left uh, many companies and investors worried about whether they will be able to retrieve their funds mm-hmm. from this bank. Mm-hmm. Regulators have transferred uh, SVB's deposits to the newly created Deposit Insurance uh, National Bank of Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. In short, depositors will be able to access their funds from Monday. By the way, did you know that SVB was a member of the Federal Reserve of San Francisco? Oh, really? And the the directors, uh, actually the founders are part of the directors of the Federal Reserve. And they're encountering this kind of failure? Boom. Fire. We are living Fire. in a scam. Okay. Fire. We are living in a scam. When the people who are supposed to be the most skilled at your job are incapable of performing. You mean those Stanford MBA grads? They are useless. If you ask me, seems like all of that money was just burned for nothing if this is what you're coming out to create. Sure. Gary Gensler says to trust them. It is it, basic it, mathematics. Well, at the same time, to Jerome Powell. <laughs> Jerome Powell is over on the other side just cranking those rates, right? Which is part of what is contributing to this madness. Ah, oh, Jesus. Roku has slumped in the after hours 26% and a bunch of other uh, banks as well. As horrible as this is. Roku is a, is a tech company, but yes, banks are also crashing. First exactly. Republic is kind of, it's like the contagion effect is kicking in. What do you have a strategy for investments in this situation, and what are your thoughts before we move on to this other breakdown which we have here? Yeah, yeah. Um, Silicon Valley mm-hmm. heights of mortgage expenses. Right. Like everything in Silicon Valley is very expensive. Houses are expensive. Everything is expensive. Right. Major startups. Fifty percent of startups put their money in Silicon Valley Bank. I think it's the sixteenth largest bank, if yeah. I understand, yeah. out there. Yeah. So if you sacrifice all your life to go start up a business and then this happens and you have no influence in it, what can you do? Like, I don't know where to put mo- Number one, you can't access your money. FDIC only protects 250 250K, that's the crazy thing so about it. if you have a startup with more than, tw- which most startups probably have. Yeah, it's more, than, well. it's more than 250, yeah. So you can pay your people, you can pay salaries, you can pay your mortgage, because billions and billions of dollars are gone. I mean, wh- what's the exit plan? Your dreams have been snatched right out of your hand. Like, you, you, it's too late to do anything. Yeah. Some people took action before this happened. Some people knew what was going on. Hey, you know, this is, <laughs> this is very true. And it's, it's a, some very uh, unusual activity to say the list in that situation, right? So let's jump over here. There is this breakdown that was given by Andrew Lockenoth on Twitter. Andrew was on point, man. Right. And he I'm, was dashing it. I'm just going to breeze through some of these points here and just stop me whenever this is an interesting point I want to talk about. One of the first things he says here is that many do not realize the importance of this Silicon Valley Bank uh, ripple, effects, ripple effects to the economy. Right. It was, this is going to be coming. Right. So this is... A lot of stuff he's talking about here, stuff that has not even happened yet. Thank God for Saturday and Sunday. Right. Because Monday, <laughs> Monday. <laughs> we are all <laughs> fucked. There's going to be a battering ram coming through your um, financial accounts, your financial portfolio world. starting mo- um, what? Our banking account too. I mean, everybody. Is, everybody's, everybody's. Your, 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 your 401k. Cause yeah. This, this are, this are bonds. Yeah. Everybody can get it, man. This is incredible. Anybody can get this one coming. Mortgage companies, everything. So SVB's failure is the beginning of a domino effect through the tech and startups. Mm. Right. Um, this guy says he's worked in banking for over 10 years. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. Who else can we trust? Him or Kramer? <laughs> 
I'll go with him. I'll go with him. I'll go with him. I'll go with the guy that I just met on Twitter recently. Over at you know what? You know what? what? I mean? Let's take a pause and thank Twitter yeah. for ever existing because you cannot get yeah. this kind of information yes. on mass media. This is the future of yes. news. When they talk about the world is communicating, it's Twitter. I don't even know that I, it's the not, whole world is you know what I mean there's a we are collaborating we are com- I'm not listening to just one yes. guy on mad uh, on mad money I can listen to anybody at once as a matter of fact that guy on mad money can come over here and post his insanity it's okay too that's freedom of speech but yeah what people don't know about that over 95% of Silicon Valley bank deposits are insured by are not insured by the FDIC <clears throat> of course, this is because uh, everything over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is not insured by the. So this is over one hundred and sixty billion with a B in uninsured customer deposits. About half of all venture capital uh, uh, funded startups in the U.S. are customers of SVB. That is sixty five thousand. I startups. Can, I can feel the pain because you know I used to be in this, the startup listen, space. This listen, you have you watched three hundred? Remember the battle scene? Yeah. As they were running through that crowd. Yeah. Massacre. Yeah. Sword just ching 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 blood everywhere. This is what we're driving into right now. Man. Sixty-five thousand startups could miss payroll. This can create huge problems for the startup and tech. Uh, Calif- California will implode. Tech stocks will blow up. Okay. Monday is a bleeding path. Like you were saying at the beginning there, this is the 15th largest bank in the US by deposits. And it held over $210 billion in assets. This is the second largest bank failure in US history. This will affect somebody. Okay, this will touch somebody. Hey, listen, this is like imagine being in your church, right? And the pastor says, Can the Holy Spirit touch somebody today? <laughs> somebody out there is gonna get touched. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, this is insane, man. We're laughing, but this is some very serious stuff. Dude. No, this I is mean, not, you know, I, I can't wait to see my back. <laughs> hey, listen, man, they say sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying. So we hope you can at least laugh at this absolute incompetence. I think we can laugh because of we have some Bitcoin, but I think Bitcoin is going to get a whooping. <laughs> this Listen, <one's> so <laughs> Bitcoin will get a whooping. The price, the price the action. Big, the Bitcoin price will get a whooping. That's fine. But I've also, here's the beautiful thing about Bitcoin. It also trains you to have a long-term uh, mindset. Yeah. And then it starts making you want the price of Bitcoin to actually stay down so that you can accumulate a decent amount of Bitcoin. Don't get me wrong. There will be a point of impatience where this thing is going to have to swing up. However... At that point, when it finally moves up, man, that's how it, you know, people's lives this, change. But, this know. is part of what we we'll say trustless. Yes. Transparency. Accountability. Yes. Did you know what these banks were doing with your money and why all of a sudden it's crashing? This is what we keep telling the folks. We've done multiple videos about banks, about FDIC insured, and why Bitcoin matters. Yeah. You know what they were doing with people's money? Oh, let's see what happened here. Let's tell them. This is the portfolio management strategy of uh, Harvard grads or whatever the hell these people came from. Silicon Valley Bank. This is the largest, 15th largest bank again. Okay. And what it did is it bought government bonds with fixed interest rates. And as the Fed rates uh, raised rates, their bonds lost value. Brilliant investment strategy. No, the, remember what, you mean? what happened? How is that not brilliant? Mm-hmm. The smartest folks on public, public will bring you up, will say go and buy bonds. No risk. Ah, it's safe. <laughs> it's money making. <laughs> Don't get me started on public. Listen, when I was on public, okay, there was a, there is this. It seems that listen, I love the I love the 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 beginner mindset. I love the crowd learning and everything. Absolutely spectacular. Good. Good, good environment for that. However, let me point out something. As you learn, as you're learning, one thing that you have to do is to open your mind to the wide range of possibilities. Because when you start picking a trajectory too early in your learning process, 
This is how it becomes stifled. Listen, I was on public arguing with people about shilling crypto, even though all I did was freaking talk about Bitcoin. The level of incompetence match with some level of impressive ego. debating skills, actually, right? And ego. I don't know if it was copy paste. It was just flabbergasting to me. But... There was a group on public that was just all about your bonds in a freaking inflationary environment where the bonds are not even matching that inflation and they will not let it go. Mm-mm. You know, they, they got me to buy some bonds too. Oh, you bought some bonds? It's going up now, but I can't wait. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying for you guys. Listen, you here's know, a, I was learning. So but, I, but here's, I, 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 I experimented. Here's my thing. Bonds. Here's my thing. I'm open to it all. I'm open to it all. I think that it is good to... But do not make a principle of yourself, is what I'm saying. Yeah. You understand? Um, explore different things. Yeah. Explore different things. Um, but at the same time, when it comes to these banks, okay, mm-hmm. I do not think that I can approach their situation in the same way. When it comes to public, it's whatever, man. It's mm-hmm. chit chat. It's mm-hmm. we're just all people on the internet learning things. I'm gonna talk yeah. my shit. Educating people. Yeah, it's fine. I'm gonna talk my shit. Information. People are gonna come at me. The same like I was just saying. I was arguing with this guy. I was saying I was shilling coins mm-hmm. when I was just talk, trying to talk to him about Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the banks, entities like this, and like how I was saying that last video, the trust factor, right? When you have studied something and spent so much time, effort, resources to be the best at something and you come out and you're performing like this, listen, I will trust, what is it called? Wall Street bets with my money. Over this madness? Than a lot of all this. Look, if you, if you roll back throughout this past, since COVID happened, I think that the financial environment, the financial industry has been exposed for the bullshit as they are. Fully exposed. There's because Imagine, the, this is coming from a Federal Reserve Bank. Yeah. They're bullshitters, man. All the way. They don't know what they're doing. They are directors. Okay? They don't know what they're doing. Look, so they bought these fixed interest rates, right? And then the feds starts to raise the rates and the bonds lost value. Now, Silicon Valley Bank had $80 billion in bonds averaging a yield of 1.5%. Somebody gives you eighty billion dollars, and that's the best you can do. One point five percent. Hey, it's people's money, so no. they, they, they they figure they have to keep people's money safe. What is people's money, bro? Because here we are now. What is people's money? Because they knew that interest rates are going to be continuously getting raised, man. They, what happened to diversification? This is not proper diversification. They want they want Jerome Powell, and Jerome Powell's like, no, I got this. Mm. We can tame inflation. Okay. Bro, things are going south. No, we can tame inflation. As a matter of fact, this is what we've been telling the world. America is not innovative and America is not growing because people have chosen to go and put money right. in so-called bonds. Well, listen. Nobody wants bonds yielding 1.5% when the current market is selling bonds with use over 5%. I'm getting 5% on my little bond experiment right now. They had it at 1.5. They got a fixed rate spot. Here's what is interesting. Little trade idea. Okay. Sounds radical. <laughs> you guys are going to talk about regulation, blah, 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 whatever. You know, they could have just bought Dogecoin <laughs> with half of this money <laughs> and held it for two weeks, a couple of weeks ago. And they would have not been bankrupt right now. I will say this though, for the Bitcoiners out there. Brazen trades Dogecoin to raise money literally every week. And yes. it makes money at it. We never trade Bitcoin, but we use Dogecoin, trading Dogecoin. as our fundraising tool. Listen. And it works. It literally Listen. works. Listen, I know there are Bitcoiners where I get traded anything. I don't give a shit, bro. Whatever. Talk to I'm me trying on to make money, man. Yes. I'm trying to win. What are you doing? <laughs> anyway, whatever. But you're right, Double O. You have to find a way to raise funds to get the things that you want. Not, not, However you do not, it. Not 1.5% though. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be SBF. Now, you were talking about there's been some interesting activity and people selling, mm, right? The insider. We see that the uh, CEO, right? Uh, Silicon Valley Bank, which is under control of the federal government mm-hmm. right now, but right before the bank collapsed, okay, the CEO sold 11% of the stock 
The CFO sold 32% of the stock. The CMO, 28% of the stock. At $320. And you said, did they know something? Of course they knew something. Is it a coincidence? This has happened now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it seems like the mic went quite different. Yeah, yeah. When the audio audio magic something yeah. happened there well in case our audio did not go off we're just gonna push on with this video yeah. <laughs> just let us know yeah. right and then interesting stuff now again i'm gonna leave this let us know down in the comments do you think that these guys knew about it All right okay. um elon musk is saying or floating this idea of buying <laughs> of buying the bank and making it an online bank what do you think do you think elon is just here to throw fire on the uh i, I, do, of fire? I, I did leave a comment though mm-hmm with the power of open AI or AI in general, okay. right? And the blockchain. Imagine now buying that bank. Yeah. Because we still need some sort of interface, right? Right. And converting it to full AI blockchain bank. Right. And build it on, guess what? What? what on Bitcoin? On Lightning Network. On Lightning Network. Oh. All the transactions on SVP on Lightning Network and Twitter being the backbone. Just pay attention to this idea that this, uh, this man has given here. Okay. Fire. Whether we are the ones we implement it or not, just know that this is coming to life. Mark this moment. Mm. We'll have to reshare this video in the future. Let's do it. Okay. We cannot read through all of these tweets, but nah, we slowly. highly recommend that you go and read through these tweets. Okay. Follow but, Andrew. Exactly. Andrew is the man. Yeah. Andrew is the king, man. Let him know. However, we have to look at both perspectives. Okay. There is more than two sides to one story. This is the best part of Twitter, y'all. You're yes. not just listening to CNBC you get it all. from one angle. You're getting it from multiple Listen, angles. Just in, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, warns the public of coming losses in asset value due to climate change. Yes. An asteroid is going to strike the freaking stock market. This lady is a freaking idiot, bro. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move oh, on. Um, one of Silicon Valley's top bank failed as uh, well. This again, AP the, News. AP News is AP uh, News, it's one of the big right? It says one of the there. banks failed and and uh, assets are seized. Yeah, I think this is the one where they show us some of the other banks yes. as well that yeah, are affected yeah, yeah. by this. Um, this is where we get to figure out how bad this could be. Okay. So you know, um, as a startup founder. Uh, uh, trying to raise funds for multiple startups that have started in the fact you know you're very familiar with Y Combinator yeah and get it 10 and um, this article here is just telling us about hmm, the major impacts that we're about to see right, right. so uh, same thing that we've said in the past already is that you know half of all tech and healthcare startups in the last year mm-hmm. all have their money in Silicon Valley I even know a startup that we, we use Silicon Valley Bank as our way to raise funds right um, it's a startup in Kenya, but Silicon Valley is the olden, olden company so that people can trust your deposits. Absolutely. And this article is telling us that Shopify, I was like, shit, my Shopify stock Shopify on Monday. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be in so much pain on Monday. Um, Zip Recruiter, you know, Addison Artwitz, this is like one of the biggest venture capital firms out there. That's yeah. all the big. Yeah. Addison Artwitz. Yeah. Uh, Roku. As well, I know people have been accumulating their Roku. I stopped accumulating Roku since Roku crashed. How much is Roku right now? Uh, you can check it out. But uh, the other one I was buying is the... Uh, what's the other one that is the uh, competition for Roku? Small little Asian company like this. I'm running a blank on it. But yeah, that crashed 26%. $47 million. Poof. $59 gone. on Roku. Yep. Okay. And guess what? We already said this. All the money in that account. What's the percentage? Only two hundred nine billion dollars of total assets. Only two hundred nine billion. Like they have two hundred two hundred nine billion dollars in total assets. Yeah. But majority of that money is not insured. It's not insured. Yeah. About ninety five. Some some people are saying eighty five. Some people are saying ninety five percent. It's about nine. You definitely listen. Seventy percent is too much. <laughs> You're right. We're in the nineties with this thing. So. So th- this article here is just letting us know the impact that we're about to face. Now, when we talk about this contagion and domino effect as yeah. well, right? We know that um, there was, uh, they had this, uh, wasn't there a, uh, uh, like a home m- mortgage backed uh, 
oh. loans that these people had as well? No, that is Silvergate. Is that Silvergate? Well, we'll talk about Silvergate. I keep Gate. confusing these people and Silvergate. We yes. just happen at the same time. But, but we'll talk about that one. That, but uh, funny Silvergate enough, video. though, there are Sophie mortgage companies yeah. that also have the money in Silver Carmax. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised Carmax is actually still up. No, <laughs> their money is in this stuff as well. Oh, so they're going down. Oh, okay. Jeez. Well, <coughs> it's going to impact the mortgage. It's going to impact the financial industry. It's going to impact the healthcare industry. It's going to impact the biggest, the tech industry. May God help us all on Monday. <laughs> That's all I can say. This is this is chaotic. Because a lot of times, man, you're sitting here and we're looking at these things and you're, you're just asking yourself, is this real, man? Is this really happening? Right? And uh, I don't think until Monday morning comes through and there is some out of ordinary stuff going on. Do you want to show them what Monday morning which, might look like? Because it already started on Friday. By the way, by the way, I'm, I just want to point out one thing here. Um, please notice. And I noticed this recently and it happened very suddenly. On strike, um, usually they kind of limit you to like maybe $50, $500 a week or something like that. But recently, they suddenly Increased. cranked up the amount of money that you can pull out yep. from from the traditional banks into Bitcoin. right? So, and guess who did it as well? Cash App. I got mine. Increased their limits. I was like, as oh, well. you want to put your money out? Exactly. I'm bringing it here. And they're like, listen, Exit the banking system. Oh, actually, this just reminded me. I need to say some money that I need to move across. Okay. So, this is very interesting stuff. Okay. Um, there are things that are happening. And I think it's very important. Very important time to be paying attention to these things. And Wait. position yourself accordingly before you find yourself clipped. Go ahead. Where do you store your money at this point? Uh, Terra Luna, why people out? Exactly. FTX, white people out. Oh, it's crypto. Crypto is bad. Mm. Bitcoin is bad. Because those two are different. But guess what? Your same bank, Silvergate, um, uh, Silicon Valley Bank. And yeah. now we're about to find out more banks about to get whooped. Show them the banks. Oh, share yeah. The there is the uh, share screen. Share screen activity. Let's do this. Oh, snap. <sighs> this one is a, uh, <laughs> it's one of my favorites. It's absolutely incredible. Now, let's look here. Uh, if we look at this list which we have here, mm -hmm. right, and we're just looking at some of the banks that um, are going to be affected by this massively, right? So we have, of course, SVIB Bank. That's Pac silver. That's that's a silver yeah, right. silver kit bank. Exactly. Um, Pac That's West, First Republic, Western Alliance, Charles Schwab. You know I mean, uh, what is this? Even one? CNBC themselves. Oh, CNBC is in there. <laughs> um, Connect One, oh, Bank Corp. Oh, there oh is Vanguard God. in there. There's Bank of America, Bank in, of there. America is in there. Um, there J is J P JP Morgan. Morgan is in there. It's I'm in surprised there. Black BlackRock is not in there. There is. <laughs> They're probably in there. Just at the bottom of the list. <laughs> oh my! Listen. Um, and I think one of the most interesting things about this is that uh, a stable coin circle is looking shaky as well. And we'll talk Ooh. about that in our next video. Final thoughts. Folks, I don't know how to say this. I mean, we're all going to get, I mean, we're all getting destroyed. Forget about it. I don't care how smart you think you are or what you think is saving your money. This contagion effect is going to touch at least a penny yeah. of your dollar. If it doesn't, I'll be surprised. I'm not sure. Go store your money in the moon. We are storing our money in Bitcoin because that's the only way we know we can protect against this kind of stuff. Yeah. You can't control the CEO from putting his money inside, putting your money inside a, 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 a security like a stable, stable, stable. Yeah, stable coin. <laughs> stable bond. Yeah, yeah stable bond. <laughs> stable bond versus the stable coin. Hey, man, listen. Um, it's about being a responsible investor. You know, yeah. the bonds are, the bonds and are even, extremely stable. And yeah, and even that crashes. Yeah, so you, you want to do it like a... <coughs> You put it in a stable coin like Saku, yeah. even that crashes. Where do you store your money at this point? That is the question you should be asking yourself. Go buy gold. Let me tell you, if you're an African, or if you've ever been to an African country, mm -hmm. gold is not something that is rare. 
It's not. It's not. It's go to India. Stone. India will tell you. Gold is not rare. Listen. If you ask me, man, adapt to volatility. And Bitcoin will make sense. I'm not, um, sure, I'm not sure how much dip you can buy at this point because this dip ain't, ain't got no damage. 2008 all over again, y'all. Yeah. See you at the bottom of the dipity dip dip. Okay. <laughs> Um, we are screwed. Listen, <laughs> that will be it for this one. <laughs> Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for liking, subscribing. Uh, please share with your friends. Of course, follow the channel. Uh, follow us on Twitter, StackFin. We are also on Facebook, StackFin. We're currently banned on Instagram, but I think we're going to make a reappearance. Just like Jesus, we're going to resurrect <laughs> on the third month. It's not three days. Okay. Now, of course, we're also on Spotify <clears throat> stack. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, brazen out. Double O out.